The punitive approach to drug policy, known as the war on drugs, has been widely criticized by medical professionals, scientists, activists, and politicians as ineffective, racist, unscientific, and inhumane. However, this ideology continues to be embraced by many conservative politicians worldwide due to its feasibility and political convenience. The Global Commission on Drug Policy has repeatedly emphasized that the illegal nature of the drug trade has created a lucrative black market, leading to corruption at the highest levels of government, and that the collusion between high-ranking officials and drug traffickers poses a significant threat to global security, governance, and development. Russia is a cautionary example of how global drug prohibition can empower criminal politicians to gain and consolidate power, as well as justify massive investments in law enforcement, security, and militant spheres. Alexander Litvinenko, a former Russian Federal Security Service officer, gained international attention after his assassination in 2006. The inquiry into his assassination, also known as Litvinenko Report, alleges that before coming to the presidency, Putin was complicit with his closest ally, Viktor Ivanov, who later becomes the head of the Russian Drug Control Service, and other individuals involved in trafficking and money laundering for a Colombian drug cartel. The war on drugs has fueled Putin's powers, the weight, the authority, and the wealth were achieved through careful integration of the legal and illegal economies, including the drug markets. Later, the war on drugs led by the Putin administration has resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands. Others have suffered mental and physical health deterioration, lost their partners and limbs, became disabled, been deprived of freedom in prisons and rehabilitation camps, and subjected to torture and systemic inhumane treatment, violence and deprivation of civil and political rights. The tough on drugs and zero tolerance to people who use them approach became the party line and formed the basis of the national drug strategies. The government has explicitly refused to prevent AIDS, tuberculosis and overdoses and has cut access to essential medicines for people suffering from drug dependency, using anti-Western ideology as justification. Despite the brutality of this war, its victims remain unrecognized and invisible as their deaths and suffering go unnoticed. We started the work of the Andrei Lilko Foundation in 2009. The same year, the Russian Minister of Health announced that the government would no longer support any harm reduction programs as the influence of the West. We started by publishing a story of our friend Kostya Proletarsky, a harm reduction advocate from St. Petersburg who died of AIDS-related tuberculosis meningitis shortly after his release from a Russian penal colony. During his final interview, Kostya recounted his experiences at prison facility number no. 4 in Karelia, Russia, highlighting inhumane treatment and torture, including in a gas chamber. He also shed light on the inadequate provision of HIV and TB treatments within the Russian penal system. Kostya's story serves as a poignant example of the challenges faced by numerous individuals with drug dependencies in Russia. Instead of receiving adequate treatment and support, many have encountered repression, imprisonment and degrading treatment, resulting in death. Since 2009, we have provided unauthorized harm reduction services on the streets of Moscow and documented rights violations of people who use drugs. Besides giving needles, naloxone and health assistance, we meticulously documented cases, provided legal aid and supported strategic litigation. Since 2011, we have rigorously submitted reports to all the relevant UN treaty bodies 
calling them to respond to the horrific crimes and systematic abuses against the victims of the war on drugs in Russia. In 2020, during COVID pandemic, our organization was attacked by Yevgeny Prigozhin's media and some Duma deputies for distributing information of the hardships of people who use drugs during the lockdown in Moscow. And we had to take down our archive from the internet. We are currently working on its recovery. Not only has the Russian drug policy increasingly focused on criminalization, penalization, and mass imprisonment, the government has silenced information about drugs and effective drug treatments, making it a crime to provide it. Our organization, as many other NGOs combating AIDS, was registered as foreign agent and fined many times under various pretenses, such as providing information on how to reduce drug-related harms. Drugs have been used as a tool of political repression, enabling the incarceration of journalists and activists and suppression of civil society. The Russian anti-drug crusade has become one of the pillars of the Russian anti-Western ideology, one of the reasons to attack Ukraine and a trump card on the international diplomacy table. Equipped with the international drug control conventions, the Russians sabotaged every step towards a more humane and reasonable global drug policy, peace with drugs, and the world without AIDS. Even before Russia occupied Ukraine in 2014, Russian propaganda perpetuated the narrative of being the world's saviors from the drug plague, suggesting that the revolution in Ukraine was fueled by the West, which allegedly promoted drug addiction and distributed drugs. This notion of liberating Ukraine from the drug scourge became a recurring theme for the Russian officials. On February 25, 2022, just one day after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Putin declared that he was saving the country from the gang of drug addicts. The Russian government consistently implied that the war in Ukraine was a war on drugs. As a direct consequence, Immediately after the occupation of Crimea, access to essential health care services for people who use drugs was severed in accordance with the Kremlin policy. Today, access to vital treatments is restricted in all the newly occupied territories, and we have minimal information about the victims. Putin should be held accountable for his crimes committed in the name of the war on drugs in Russia and in Ukraine. Justice should be sought and full political, civil and social rehabilitation should be provided to all the victims. The global prohibitionist regime creates an environment conductive to the rise of authoritarian leaders who abuse power and commit crimes against their own citizens, other nations and humanity. The global war on drugs is a political failure and it must end. The memory of Putin regime's crimes against the Russian population affected by drug problems should not be dismissed, even amidst the regime's more recent war crimes. The war on drugs ideology provides a template for tyrants to wage an invisible, deadly, one-sided war against the most vulnerable populations. Repressions and killings in the name of the war on drugs must be exposed, accounted for, and stopped in Russia and globally. The war on drugs ideology should be dismantled. The project of the Andrelko Foundation aims to consolidate evidence of these massive crimes, raise awareness, and contribute to the restoration of historical justice.